As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from a research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Let's start with Tencent, guys, because Tencent was in the news. And I think anytime Tencent does something big, we have to pay attention. We can't ignore it. Um, you know, they're call it one of the 800 pound gorillas in the gaming space. And the headline here is Tencent shuts down its rival to Amazon's Twitch months after China blocked key $6 billion gaming merger. So Tencent's shutting down their video game streaming platform, Penguin Esports. It says citing a change in business strategy. And this comes months after Chinese regulators shut down the merger between Huya and Douyu, which are two live streaming platforms that Tencent basically owns. And the merger would have made Tencent a major player in video game live streaming as it looked to create an equivalent of Amazon's Twitch. So lay of the land here, Huya Douyu merger never happened. That got blocked. And now Tencent's sort of other live streaming platform, Penguin Esports, they're shutting that down completely. What do you guys make of this? Do you have any thoughts on why Tencent might have shut this down? Is it more of a focus on the other two? Um, and, and does the, the sort of the rejection of the merger between the other two change any of the math for you here? Well, they also have Trovo as well, which isn't mentioned here, right? That's a, a, which is addition. more North American focused, I think, right? Gotcha. I was wondering what the difference was, why it wasn't listed here. Because we've had the opportunity to meet with Tencent to learn a little bit more about their growth strategy and how they go about, you know, launching these companies or, or vetting them and investing in them. And one thing that I'm always impressed by is it's not just a, a combination of team, of market fit, of need. There's similar to, to the Middle East and conversations we've had in that region, there is a sophisticated five to 10 year plan of attack with a lot of these investments in, in companies. I don't think that's that uncommon, right? To, to want to know what, where this company's growth trajectory is headed, but Tencent very tailored right in their steps here. So when they shut down uh, a company like this, well, if they have other properties that are potentially in competition and one of them's not showing the return that they expected, it's definitely safe to assume, I think, that they're just fo refocusing that effort and what's already working. Um, well, I don't know why they would spend money to compete against themselves. Uh, but they made investments in competing platforms. Right. I guess, like, does anyone think there was a master plan to put, call it, all four of these platforms together or at least all three of them? And now, now that that hasn't happened, we may see them shut them down one by one until there's only one left. Like, because we all know scale matters, right? like scale matters with platforms like this, you need millions of eyeballs to, to, for the platform to be valuable to the creators. Um, does anyone think we may see more shutdowns or, or what their master plan is, Jeff? I, th I think, I think we probably will. Um, I guess the question is, I don't know the exact ownership structure of the other two, whether they would be able to, you know, I don't know if they fully control the other two. Um, but it does make sense that they, they kind of shut down the lag or like, if you already have such a big stake, like why, why compete against yourself um, with the worst brand? Um, the, the thing that I was going to mention is a little bit of an aside, but I'm curious, and I don't know that we even have the data, but I, I wonder how these streaming services have done vis-a-vis um, -vis the ban on under 18 um, play in China. Like, I, I, you know, because part of me thinks, hey, if you're not able to play games, if you're under 18, you're limited. Maybe you, you switch a lot of your time to watching people game just because you want to kind of get your fix. Um, I don't know if that's actually been seen in the data, the behavioral data. I mean, I don't have that data, so I don't know how that factors in. Um, I, I mean, I guess the question is, what's Tencent's master plan? Just coming back to that. What is the master plan? I think you hit the nail on the head. It's like pick, pick one champion and then 
put all your resources behind it. Like why? I don't understand the strategy of fragmentation. Like you said, it, it's a scale industry, network effects. Like why invest in two competing entities and three? You don't buy any argument, Jeff, around, you know, who is maybe for just chatting streamers and like, and 18 plus and do use for, you know, kids to play Minecraft and watch other Minecraft stream. Like, you know what I mean? Like segmentation, either based on age or genre. Do, Cause that has never happened in North America, even though I suspected at some point it might. Do you think we see it in China first? I don't know. Do you, do you want to answer that or someone else? I'm happy to give my opinion. But. Yeah, go ahead. I have a different thought on this, I think. So I think it's totally possible what you're saying, Paul, and I think it even makes some sense. I just don't know if you need to have two separate complete companies to do that. Like having segmentation and different brands, like sub brands within one entity, I, I could easily see almost like channels on a, you know, a, a cable subscription. Like, you know, there's the food network and then there's ESPN and obviously they service different audiences. I, I think that's totally possible for, for streaming, but I don't know why you would need to have a completely different company and corporate, you know, corporate governance and, and infrastructure that, that seems inefficient. Yeah. Lindsay, what was your take on it? You said you had a different take. Yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, and I could be completely wrong here, but I definitely saw this more as a reaction to the Chinese regulatory environment and rethinking how they were going to build a winning streaming platform. Um, I know that you know one merger got blocked. There's all these restrictions on 18. There's not a lot of encouragement to build huge platforms at the moment. I more so took this as a we're reframing. Um, and thinking what our next move is, then we are, you know, betting on fragmentation, I guess, is the best way of saying it. 